Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh and a very good morning. Welcome to our 30th session of webinar series Captain of Industry brought to you by the Faculty of Engineering UTM Johor Bahru. We are initiating university industry collaboration during unforeseen pandemic situation since movement control order to have a platform with our Captain of Industry to share their thoughts, way forward and challenges during post-COVID-19 now we are streaming live from Facebook Faculty of Engineering University Technology Malaysia. Today, we would like to welcome yang berbahagia Dr. Jim Hui Hong, Chief Executive Officer for DG Plus Technologies and Founder for DG Plus Technologies Inc. with his interesting topic today entitled Transformative Innovation, Creating Radically Disruptive High-Value Products and Services Enabled by Industry 4.0 Digital Technologies. Without further ado, I would like to invite Yang Berusaha Professor Datuk Engineer Dr. Muhammad Rafiq Datuk Berkadir, Dean Faculty of Engineering to introduce our captain today. Over to you, Datuk. Murni, thank you so very much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Hello, welcome everyone to UTM Engineering Captain of Industry, jointly organized by the Center for Community and Industry Network, CSIN, and the Faculty of Engineering, UTM. My name is Muhammad Rafiq and I am the Dean of Engineering uh, UTM. Today, it, it is my utmost pleasure to welcome Dr. Jim Lee Hui Hong, CEO and founder of DigiPass Technologies, Centurion, uh, DigiPass Technologies Incorporated. A bit about our distinguished speaker today. Dr. Lee is CEO and founder of DigiPass Technologies Incorporated, a technologically focused company, JSB Tech Private Limited, JSB Tech Japan, and PT Venturindo Jaya Batam. For over two decades, he has led these companies, which employs a total of approximately 500 people, to research, develop, design, and manufacture FFC electronic components, intelligent precision angular measuring instruments, smart IoT enabled security locking devices, and personal protective equipment PPE. His R&D activities are situated in Singapore and USA. In 2019, his US company, Digibus Technologies Incorporated, was assigned and issued by US Defense Logistics Informative Information Service, DLIS, with a commercial and government entity code, CAGE code, an identifier as strategic suppliers to various governmental or defense agencies, including NATO countries. His company's precision angular measuring instruments and advanced MEMS technology sensor modules attained numerous certifications awarded by world leading metrology labs, Boeing Metrology Labs USA, Japan's GAQA, and Germany's Treskel for products performance and specification conformance traceable to NIST, JIS, DIN, and UKAS standards. These instruments have been evidently used by some of the world's most technologically advanced companies, research laboratories, and government institutions such as NASA, US Navy, US Air Force, Lockheed Martin, SpaceX, Raytheon, Tesla, Boeing, Airbus, Mazak, DMG Moriseiki, Intel, Mitsubishi, Honda, Makino, US Naval Research Lab, NASA Jet Propulsion Lab, Brookhaven National Lab, MIT Lincoln Lab, Sandia National Lab, Cambridge Cavendish Lab, Siemens, Intel, Hyundai, and BMW. So that is a brief biography of our captain today. So here now is Dr. Jim Lee Hui Hong, CEO and founder of DigiPass Technologies Incorporated with his talk on innovation and invention. Dr. Jim, over to you. Thank you. Uh, and uh appreciate for Rafif. 
uh, Professor Rafi for the introduction. And uh, I shall go forwards to to give the presentation, right? Well, I will share uh, the theme and uh, basically uh, I will keep it very short uh, and uh, fast and uh, I will leave more space and time for uh, q and A. I'll start with how to invent or innovate. These are the question which is uh, most uh, undergraduate or graduates are looking for uh, when they start to work. Uh, basically inventing breakthrough new product and services to create distinctive product services with high value. This kind of endeavor is a high risk and take a lot of time. The other, on the other extreme is that imitating existing product or services usually with a marginal improvement, although create little value, but uh, they, uh, the, it has a low risk and fast. Uh, however, today I share the concept called transformative innovation and particularly focuses on the process itself. And these are, uh, uh, transformative innovation has uh, built up academic theory for the last many years and uh, Professor Tan and I have a paper uh, uh, published in journals of international manufacturing a couple of years ago and uh, next is the transformative uh, process is just like uh, best uh, depicted by a, from a crawling worms uh, to a beautiful butterfly. Another concept I would like to share is the uh, ability of this transformation process is from then ugly duckling to a beautiful swine. Uh, what is a transformative innovation? Is a radical innovation model positions as somewhere between the previous invention and imitation. Radical means uh, it contains leaps and bounds of upgrading result significant product process functional performance and enhancement does outcome command very high uh, values. Uh, it, uh, its outcome seeks to displace existing product and services does contain the element of disruption. These are in contrast with those uh, normal incremental innovation model. So what are the outcomes of this uh, transformative information? I will share some uh, uh, realities, products and services that we have been uh, um, innovated and then uh, sold this product worldwide, you know, commercialized. Uh, in the process of innovation, uh, person are hard to claim that they have innovation unless they have some uh, proven themselves have a well-established patterns in the uh, major markets like IP, intellectual property rights. So we, we, we have covers uh, WIPO, US patent office, uh, Japan patent office, and even in China patent office, uh, quite a number of patents. So uh, before creating this uh, 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 transformative in innovation, uh, I did search for the uh, literature many years back maybe over 15 back, 15 years back. And uh, couldn't find much, but there are some uh, knowledge-based 
called the Discipline of Innovation by a well-known Peter Drucker. Uh, he says that in innovation rarely spring from flash of in inspiration, but instead it arises from cold eyes analysis of seven kinds of opportunities. Those successful are the result of conscious and purposeful search for innovation opportunities. So there is no practical model found on how to innovate at that time. And that's why uh, we uh, create this uh, transformative innovation model. And uh, in order to, to be able to form this transformative innovation, uh, we require disruptive technologies as enabler. So there are one of the set out of seven of innovation opportunities. Under the industrial 4.0, I only mention three uh, important uh, item related to industrial 4.0 as artificial intelligence, new material and genetic. These are some of the things that related to uh, this uh, transformative innovation. Internet technology, uh, digital technology, artificial intelligence, cloud blockchain, and uh, biotech, nanotech. These are quite uh, significantly uh, currently existing and affecting the futures. The next I will share uh, uh, these uh, some of the products that actually have created. So the technology for uh, sensors, uh, leveling sensors or angular sensors is migrate from the left side to the right side and it changed from a tra traditional spirit valve to integrated circuit that allow us to be able to develop the inclinometers or the two axis digital level that seek to replace the traditional level and uh, this products have created from the left side here and has been transformed to a new form of two axis and selling at a much higher value and literally we have uh, transformed the traditional spirit level to become a smart or intelligent level with much higher price many times this is another example of sensors which used in some of the uh, industries. These are the application uh, for the product that has been transformed. These are real products which, which is used by some of the world leading uh, companies, including some of the uh, world-leading research laboratories. Uh, this product has been sold worldwide. Uh, thus, it covers most of the major advanced market. The second uh, categories of products is a uh, smart lock or the intelligent access security software. Uh, typically, uh, this uh, business we specialize in uh, develop manufacture of high quality uh, smart locking device and uh, include the uh, access management software. These are uh, lock replace seek to replace the old outdated conventional key mechanical lock and what is possible is because of this combination of three technology digital technology whereas the bluetooth wireless smartphone the nfc technology 
and the cloud technology. And these products are become the smart lock and we can use a, a, a smart watch to, to unlock. And this is a uh, luggage and uh, with a fingerprints and uh, And this is a typical uh, pet lock which has been transformed to become a smart lock. And it has a app and uh, some software in the website. And the software is that typically is being pro programmed and managed by the administrators. And all this information will be sent it up to cloud. And the cloud will be able to share a code through the app and uh, the person will be able to access a uh, certain gate door and some <clears throat> assets facilities uh, from remotes of thousands of kilometers away these are the typical uh, software which is uh, allow the lock to be able to uh, manage from remote location and this traces is very interesting is that it traces a driver who are dispatching uh, goods in various type of location and we can the operation manager perhaps are able to uh, trace and track trace and track at what time what location and who are uh, using this uh, this uh, uh, a lot? And this product has been sold in major uh, dis distribution channel, and uh, we win uh, quite a number of award: uh, CS 2015, 2016, and the uh, Japan DIY. Uh, and uh, we have successfully transformed this lock to become a new version of it and including the software. And an another transformation from the ugly duckling to become a beautiful swine. And in fact, uh, this kind of pattern we do observe it existed like, for example, typical a vacuum and it has been transformed from a Dyson tech, with tech, cyclone technology and this day become an iRobot. So the value of this uh, transformation has created significantly or multiple times uh, other than the product that we have. So the last part is the reusable uh, face mask. Uh, as we know in this current pandemic uh, during the early last year uh, the world had shortage of uh, n95 grade uh, mask so in early february last year we focused to create a mask re which is reusable use less material and uh, to solve the no safety mask n95 grade issue and then by june we can speed it speedily develop uh, improve on the mask from just a basic n95 mask to become more comfort and safety and in october last year we were successfully uh, to make the mask become much more intelligent so these are the masks that we created and it has a form like that and uh, which a three ply antibacterial and virus uh, filtering capabilities and uh, this is a one sixth or one fifth of a typical surgical mask thus this one is uh, disposable which is contain less such material so the next is a uh, 
we improve it to have become an intelligent mask with an app with some sensors to detect the temperatures and uh, the pressures and many other information. And uh, we uh, get quite a lot of certification because this is a PPEs uh, from all over the world. And we secure uh, three patterns uh, in these areas. And this product has been sold worldwide, including in Malaysia as well. And the summary, uh, emerging technology couple of radical innovation could be systematically identified, acquired, developed to create high value new products that specifically seek to displace existing commoditized product, which ultimately take over a large top end market share. Technology contains disruptive element is the core enable or catalyst for creating such a high value distinctively new product and services in this systematic innovation framework and process model more detail is in the paper which is uh, early i shared so professor tan and i call this form of innovation is a, as a transformative innovation the merit of this innovation model is that uh, most uh, <coughs> it, this innovation mo model focuses on well-known market size of existing commodity product does it mitigate the high risk of conventional startup which often depends solely on embedding new technology to create a completely new product for an entirely new market. These new unproven niche market are often tiny in size that limit business scale and growth. Many are merely illusion or imaginary rather than real market, hence unsustainable and very high failure rate for startup. The transformative our innovation model, in fact, mitigate market risk, meaning that who will buy the product since the product is already the, the traditional or the old fashioned pro, uh, product has already existed, meaning that it has enduring needs. Second is that it mitigate uh, technology risk. Will it work? Since we are using some of emerging uh, technology, this technology uh, more or less has been proven to work. So embedding them into this uh, conventional lock and to transform, to create a transformative is much more uh, uh, prudent. And the last bit is to create new product with distinctive features uh, typically enabled by uh, the clouds and the technology that it has, smartphone, software, apps, and it creates uh, high value, not only physical product, but it has the service, the software service uh, set pictures as well. So uh, in that sense, uh, I will end this uh, this uh, presentation. Uh, thank you. I will return this to uh, uh, Professor Rafif for. So, uh, well, Murni, I'll pass this back to Professor Rafif. Murni, you need to uh, unmute. Just a mental branding, it's hard. Right. Sorry, yes. Ah, okay, I'm sorry. Further, uh, accidentally mute myself. All right, thank you, Dr. Jim, for your insightful okay. sharing for today. And I open to our viewers if they have um, further questions or we have some ideas to throw and to share together. And um, okay, Dr. Jim, this is my just my from point of view. What do you think about our 
um, the second version of MCU, how does this kind of enforcing um, circumstances affected to um, digital technologies, um, you know, in industry for current situation now? Why do you think, Doctor? Uh, how does this current, this current enforcing situations affected to the industry, to your industry actually? Well, uh, this, this is very practical question. Well, uh, indeed, uh, uh, as we know, the worldwide uh, many places, including US, Japan, and uh, Europe, uh, uh, are in a lockdown situation. Uh, very fortunately, uh, because our product is related to the defense industry, the, the and some uh, research laboratory and pretty wide uh, 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 customer base. And the manufacturing side are mostly in Asia. And as you know, Asia has performed much better in terms of um, uh, managing the pandemic situation. So in terms of factories, uh, we are very lucky. Most of our customers are operating. Uh, except there are some glitch for early last year when Malaysia went into lockdown for about two weeks. But in Thailand, Vietnam, in China, uh, immediately, uh, basically in Th Thailand and Vietnam, there has been uh, operating all the time, including in Indonesia, the factories. Uh, on the market side, I think we know the uh, uh, global logistic uh, both uh, sea freight and uh, air, air freight has been operating somewhat quite uh, or close to normal. So we are able to ship our product manufactured in Asia right to the advanced country. So they, 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 they are, their operation has uh, a large part work from home, but uh, there are some segments of it still working. So we didn't have uh, quite a significant impact on that, with uh, typically about 10%, 8 to 10% down. I think that is uh, from uh, our company's experience. Right. Thank you, Dr. Jim, for your kind of response. And from Q Tin Lee, uh, thanks for the sharing. You mentioned about mitigation of market risk, and etc. How do you minimize this risk? Could you share the analyze or intuitive? Uh, mitig mitigating market risk is very uh, important because uh, this uh, I shared uh, this uh, this uh, uh, PowerPoint I meant for probably students, uh, a lot of young students or early age. They are very innovative. They are very creative. So they often including perhaps many years back me too. So they 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 uh, uh, typically uh, imagine some uh, product which is trying to solve a completely new problem. Uh, for example, perhaps like a car that can fly, you know, this kind of this kind of thing. But uh, but since there is no car can fly present at the present moment, meaning that uh, the market, we do not know whether people want to drive a car that can fly, meaning that existing, there is there's no such market. Of course, uh, the potential is huge if someday people realize that they want to drive a car that can fly. Mm -hmm. So these are the market risks, you see. So the nature of our our uh, this transformative innovation is, is is not like that. It's probably like Tesla, which is have an existing car which is running on the road, but it run based on fossil, and we change it to become a using electric technology, and change it to become an electric car and put some software, make it more intelligent. It can uh, auto uh, 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 drive, and that the easier migration from existing uh, uh, customer to migrate to electric car and using the similar infrastructures uh, the the road you know the traffic mm -hmm. light signal mm -hmm. some kind like that in that way uh transformative innovation is much more uh, uh, uh 
much more uh, uh, be able to, uh, to, to, to take part of this kind of uh, traditional market to the customer. Well, hopefully I address that, that question. Okay, of course, mm -hmm. Jim. All right, um, do we have a second question from our viewers? Let me check. Okay, all right. Again, from the uh, Dr. Chutin Lee, quite impressive on the innovative mask. How cost competitive is this mask? Especially the time to market. Would you please share more insight on how this is done? Uh, for example, collaboration with external partners in Isitra. I know this may be trade secret. Well, indeed, yeah. This, this is very interesting question. Uh, uh, this day, uh, uh, mask actually is a uh, commoditized. You know, before the pandemic, mask is extremely low cost. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But uh, when the uh, pandemic come, uh, then the demand and supply, uh, mm -hmm. the supply are unable to meet the demand, and the price uh, move up. However, when we look back. Uh, this kind of a commoditized product, there is another segment called the N95 grade mask. And these are for uh, professional use. This segment has been relatively expensive even before the pandemic mm -hmm. because they are used by uh, professionals and uh, medical uh, purposes in hospital. Mm -hmm. So uh, we were trying to uh, somewhat like bringing this type of N95 grade of mask to the uh, consumer or uh, the public. Uh, mm -hmm. Some of the public people, they might necessarily need this kind of product. So we are, look, we are more segmented, looking for the pyramid, if you like, on the top, top mm -hmm. uh, 10. So in that, that uh, context, then the price uh, or the price competitiveness or the cost is not quite uh, significantly uh, compared to a typical like the middle or lower end surgical mask, which is uh, highly commoditized in terms of uh, the product. Uh, I think uh, that should be. So on the smart mask, uh, we are looking for a kind of uh, like like a segment which is uh, more skewed toward, uh, they call it the uh, prosumer. They have a term, professional, professional consumer. consumer. <laughs> so they are willing to pay uh, much mm -hmm. more uh, mm -hmm. to, uh, to have uh, this kind of uh, product. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, in the some service industry, uh, they want to have a uh, look at their face directly instead of the cover so you can see that the smart the intelligent mask that we have uh, got somewhat translucent so you can see the facial uh, features uh, when talking and yet it's still covered by n95 gray i think oh, that's cool. yeah yeah it's, it's quite interesting it's really interesting um yeah of course we are adapting ourselves uh, in wearing masks every every time and for now um not lockdown is not um yeah, i mean yeah of course lockdown is the best solution but not the best solution for everybody and we need to um turn down um the the the, the curve of um the spike number of um covid 19 fashion for now all right. Um, again, from Dr. Um, Chiu Tin Lee, what kind of specializations or traits of graduate are you looking for when you recruit new member to your team? Are you recruiting for more talents? And how you um, students who uh, may apply to join you? Indeed, this question is highly relevant to us. Uh, in order to innovate, uh, we need uh, some of the best uh, young student creative 
uh, we have people here to uh, coach and guide, you know, the more seniors, including our advisory team, that to guide the, the, the younger generation to have the abilities to innovate uh, a complete new product. And then uh, this product, we have the platform to put it into the world market. Mm -hmm. I think uh, some of these uh, students, uh, including coming from Malaysia, Singapore, and some are from the other part of the world, uh, they, they have been quite excited. And some of them, we will send them to our US uh, and lab and then to our customers uh, abroad. So they, their exposure is a global as instead of... Uh, uh, so we're looking for some, some brightest... Uh, 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 graduate, uh, including from UTM, uh, that typically they are in the triple E mechanicals, uh, uh, engineering, and uh, we 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 are looking forward to it. We have an email in our website, and they can uh, drop us emails, and uh, we, and uh, we look forward uh, for 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 this uh, graduate uh, and welcome them have the opportunity yeah oh, okay thank you dr jim um, for your response and from Hamad iswan how best ways to fund investors or funds to enable university product to penetrate the real market as we know cost operation and marketing also high how's your response of that investor fund to enable university yeah well uh for many years, including we are in Cambridge and uh, in Nottingham University, and even in, in Japan, uh, is has been uh, we have been talking about this uh, how to make university have the capabilities to to, to create new product. However, academics are quite often uh, uh, consumed a lot of resources and time in doing research and doing the routine. So it is very tough uh, to have a, a, a innovation center, something like that in the university, and which they hire uh, full-time people to, to, to realize some of the ideas, if you like, uh, in the university. Uh, that is possible. Uh, however, once the product has been uh, developed to alpha prototype, moving to beta prototype, and uh, to penetrate into the real market, it needs a different team where involving marketing, involving manufacturing, mass manufacturing, fine tuning the product to meet certain uh, market. For example, our mass uh, has been found typically too small for the Caucasian. Mm. They have a much longer nose, you know, this and that. Yes, but, and also the jaw also, Doctor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 They have a, a very distinctive facial features, contour. Yes. So, so, so uh, that, that are the things that require a lot of fine tuning. And this kind of uh, task could be very, very taxing. And uh, uh, you, for university to handle it, it is, is quite a task. So usually it collaborate with industry after it passed the uh, beta prototype tested, and then uh, the work will go to, to the industry or the business people, if you like to say. And that, that uh, external investor and fund they, they look forward for this kind of uh, 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 segregation or division mm -hmm. of labor, if you like, because uh, these are much more uh, uh, realistic to be able to capitalize or to, to return of investment. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, what the investor fund are looking for, <laughs> isn't it? Hopefully, oh, they address oh, the okay. as one. Yeah. So this um, this is a startup, or just uh, we just begin the journey, okay, to what for uh, unfortunate, and we have to adapt for the new norm and a new kind of um, you know uh, our lifestyle, isn't it? All right, okay. Um, again, uh, maybe this is 
that was the last questions and from Dr. Chiu Tim Lee, of course, uh, uh, she said thanks for the great sharing. Um, so then uh, for the students, you can explore more at the company website. All right. Okay. Thank you. Good sharing, Dr. Jim. And thank you so much, um, Doctor, for accepting our invitation. And it's our privilege to have uh, you for with us today. And it is our great pleasure to have you as our captain. And despite of your busy schedule, you are giving your precious time with us today. And thank you again for our viewers, uh, for your passion and keep your interest with uh, Capture of Industry. And uh, with that, I, uh, I pass back to uh, Dato. Thank, uh, thank you for sharing the session. And, and uh, to our uh, distinguished speaker today, Dr. Jim, thank you so much for accepting our invitation. And thank you so much for an interesting sharing session on invention and innovation. It is certainly part of UTM's DNA as far as invention and innovation is concerned. So I believe that uh, your talk uh, this morning uh, has, uh, has received uh, a lot of attention from our staff, students, as well as alumni. There are 300 viewers for this particular session, and I believe there will be a lot more uh, that will watch your recorded lecture after this, uh, after this session. So again, thank you so much uh, to Dr. Jim. And thank, thank you so you. much for all our viewers. Thank you for watching UTM Engineering Captain of Industry. Do stay tuned because we have many more interesting sessions for you. Until next time, bye bye for now. Assalamu alaikum. Okay. Bye bye. bye, -bye. So, stay bye -bye. safe. Keep your social distancing. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Doctor.